Gonna watch my show, gonna watch it live, gonna watch some Jupiter at night. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Jupiter at Night. My name is Chris. My name is Jeremy. And I say hi, hi there, Mars Base. My name is Heather, or Mars Base. Hey, Heather. Now, Heather's returning because it's a, it's another Space Wednesday episode. Space! And, uh, you, you know, uh, we have covered a lot of the different angles of uh, government-sponsored space travel. Mm -hmm. You know, and with a, with a heavy focus on NASA. Um, yeah. and, and a heavy focus on Mars. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? Uh, recently in the Jupiter Colony form, uh, a poster by the name of Ski, who also joins us in the uh, live IRC chat room tonight, uh, he wrote in and said, that's it, guys. The gloves are off. Whoa. And I thought this was great because uh, Ski is over in uh, Fort Briggs and uh, he was he was there on duty. And he, you know, he says, I love to watch Jupiter at night shows there. Great source of news. And uh, especially with his schedule. You're getting it wrong. But he was pretty upset. He took us to task. And you guys, I'll put a link in the show notes if you want to read it. It's a great post that he put in there. It was tongue in cheek. And he said, but really though, you've got to talk about the private space industry because yeah, it's, it seems like lately with the, with NASA retiring the shuttles and SETI project being shut down and mm. et yeah. cetera, et cetera. It just seems like really federal spot, federal sponsored space, uh, I don't know, I don't want to say evolution, but at least the future of sp federal sponsored space travel is definitely in question. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, Mars, you've made a great doc here, and I thought one of the interesting things, a lot of these private companies go through, and they kind of do these competitions to entice yeah. each other, and like I thought that was more of a recent a thing. Everyone knows. Yeah, the X-Prize no. is probably the most famous. Yeah, totally, right? Yeah, yeah these kind of uh, airline things, actually the X-Prize, was the idea for it was based off of the kind of uh, competition that was back in... 1927, when Charles Lindbergh flew nonstop from New York to Paris, that was because of the Orteg Prize. Wait, he did that for money? Yes. He's one dapper-looking guy, There too. were multiple teams competing, and, you know, he did it by himself. He didn't have to do it by himself, but he wanted to do it by himself, and it was for a competition. It was for the money. I and watched he, that old movie. I think it had uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Stewart in it? Yeah. Yeah. And he did it in a tie. You know he's yes. classy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was back in 1927. They were doing yeah. these kinds of private uh, space, or not space flight, but at least flight challenges. Yeah. Yeah. Very these cool. These kind of challenges saying, here's a prize, uh, a pot, pr a, you know, a prize pot. Who yeah. can do this? Yeah. And see, you know, and then people say, well, I want to do that. And I want to do it in under that amount of money so I can win. So you can know, profit. Positive, <laughs> you'll profit from it. Yeah. I got to say, though, like we mentioned at the top of the show, probably the most famous, right, is going to be the uh, probably the X-Prize. At mm -hmm. least that's the one I know of. I'm most I think there with. might be. Now, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, Mars, but I think there are multiple X-Prize competitions. There are now. The there Ansari X-Prize was the first. And mm -hmm. from the success of that, um, because it was so successful, they've actually opened up a slew of other X-Prizes, ranging from medicine to exploration to... Oh, oh it's not all, all space. No, it's not all space. They've mm. got it in different areas. Education. Um, so there's all sorts of these different That's prizes. Awesome. You go, well, hey, this worked so well in exploration. I bet this can work in other areas. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, the original X Prize was to get into space, and it was like, it had like a $10 million. Was that what it was? It was a $10, $10 million, a $10 million pro, uh, prize pot, uh, and you had to reach, they had all sorts of different rules. You had to reach 100,000 kilometers in altitude twice in a two-week period of time, and you were only allowed to um, replace so much fuel, so you had to do it the same, it, so it wasn't just get up there once. Ah, it was it get up there and Yeah, because you could do that with a missile or a yeah, rocket. Reuse with uh, the, what, was the, what was the equivalent of three people. The so weight of three able, people, right? The weight of three people. You didn't actually have to have all three people, but you had to have the weight of three people. You could just have and one really heavy person. <laughs> Or one person and two testing dummies. Yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Much luckier than the ones on the commercials. <laughs> and they did it, right? They got up there. They, yes. they, they, and, they got and there's up there. And, got, and uh, scaled composites, Burt Rutan, was Spaceship One. Spaceship uh, One. Right. And, and we have some cool video footage of it, too. It's really pretty neat. Yeah. Now, I, uh, just being a, a layman on this, I thought that the Virgin uh, flight was the one that won. The... Uh, what was it called? The Virgin Atlantic Virgin Global Atlantic. Flyer? Uh, no, that one was, uh, that was a different. He, Bert Rutan, this guy is uh, an engineer. He has multiple leagues. He has five aircraft on display in the National Air and Space Museum. Mm. The Virgin Atlantic Global Flyer did a nonstop air flight, airplane flight around the world. 
Oh. Oh, this thing's pretty slick looking too. I got a shot of it here. Uh, again, Mars Base too. always helps us put together some great uh, visuals here. Is this it here, Mars? The uh, That's the Virgin Atlantic. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very nice. That's the, Vir that's the Virgin Atlantic. Uh, there's also, you know, there, you know, of course, we're just going spaceship two and stuff, but that is the nonstop airplane around the world. Right. Yeah. Right. Awesome. So, so it is Virgin. Spo did Virgin sponsor these these prizes? Is that how it works? Yeah, it was sort of Virgin Atlantic scaled composites. You okay. know, you know, big companies will sort of be layered in each other, and it's it was Burt Rutan, you know, the and he's from who, right, right from scaled composites. Yeah, and he yeah. was doing all the the design work for a lot of these. So it's kind of like Burt Rutan was the race car driver for the NASCAR team that was sponsored by scale uh, composites. <laughs> kind of. It's more like he designed the car. He didn't drive the car. Oh, oh. He, so he, okay. Oh, okay. Neat. Somebody well, that's even cooler. Actually, yeah, somebody else flew it. Could you imagine being the first guy to, so that was the first official private sponsored ship into space, right? The, yeah, completely there's been, private. There, there's private. been no other man before that one? Uh, the, we know of. <laughs> well, it depends on how you say it was well, the first one on a uh, completely private spaceship. Yeah, that's what I mean. Private yeah. passenger. What a privilege. Thing, yeah. And it was only, uh, what, 2004. It was only seven yeah. years ago. That, yeah. yeah. Wow. These it's are, a, it's already amazing to me to think how far they've come, which uh, I guess we'll probably get to some of that a little later in the show. But there's yeah. a, here's a shot of, uh, of uh, astronaut Mike Mevel, uh, the guy that it was on September 29th, uh, 2004, after he landed. Boy, and bad. just in those seven years, how far we've come. Oh, yeah. It's, um, so what's on the horizon? Speaking of how far we've come, so that was 2004. Where are we at yeah. now? So a lot of people know about that one. The other big private company that people know about is SpaceX with right. Elon mm -hmm. Musk, the PayPal guy. Yeah, he was. Now, he's no longer at PayPal. No, he's just a co-founder. But I got a great, um, this is the picture you include in the show notes for this one is rather uh, high resolution. I got to say, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I default to like getting the biggest picture. That Absolutely. I've ever, hey, we're I'm high. Like, we're in high definition, Mars. I appreciate that. Thank you. Sometimes uh, I'm like, they're going to see his nose. Like yeah, you definitely nose. can. Uh, so now he made his millions like with PayPal and other adventures. And yep. now he's gone on to start SpaceX. Is that how it is? Yes. Hmm. And what's and, SpaceX up to? Well, they do, um, Right now, they're doing a lot of heavy lift vehicles, so they can put stuff into low Earth orbit, geostationary type orbits. Um, you know, they have, in December, they successfully launched and returned a spacecraft from orbit, so they're able to put a capsule in orbit, Okay. did two orbits around the Earth, and then it came back down. Now so their thought is, I mean, they have 12 cargo resupplies. Um, are to the space station are planned through the year 2015. So that's the kind of thing that... They're going to provide services to the International Space Station? Yeah. That, they, that wow. they'd want to be able to do that. That they'd want to be able to have the ability to go to the space station, bring uh, cargo, bring people. And they'd essentially become contractors to NASA in that scenario. Yeah, they'd be a contractor where NASA would, you know, pay them, you know, here's your money for, you know, our seven astronauts, or here's your money for a resupply mission to the space station. And what do you think, as someone who uh, follows NASA closely, um, do you think that if this were to continue on, and here's where I'm going with this, is... Uh, this, this PayPal fi uh, uh, founder, Elon Musk, the guy that's now at SpaceX, uh, mm -hmm. he recently said, uh, we think in, in two decades we're going to be on Mars. We think, yeah. we think on our own we're going to be able to send a, send a man into space in three years yeah. and we'll be on Mars in two decades. Does this, if this extremely optimistic uh, statement works out, yeah. Does that s then begin to trivial trivialize uh, NASA's efforts in the area? Would, you would think like an, an always budget conscious uh, funding Congress would look at that and go, well, we don't really need to fund that anymore because private industry is going to take care of that. And NASA, you're just going to become a research head. Well, it kind of depends. You can take that view. Um, there is a section of the community who says this kind of a thing is a great idea. You know, NASA wants to get to the moon. They say, here is 20 million. They can't... You know, and then that twenty million, there is no over budget. There is no spending it before it happens. Right. It's that you know they provide the oversight. You know, and they they watch. You know, they say here are the rules, here are the safety measures you have to follow. You know, and they can set all the rules that they would want that they would follow. 
Yeah, but and there is a certain level of quality control you lose. I mean, like, for example, Boeing had that, right? This is sort of a local story, but uh, Boeing began outsourcing the con- construction of components of their plane and then mm-hmm. began having quality control issues, which then delayed yeah. the delivery of those planes. And and uh, that just seems like when you're when you're working on something like this, I mean, I just I know how stringent and strict and meticulous NASA is. I guess that would be their business, right? That's their incentive as a small business. Yeah. Well, they have, you know, all the government agencies, including NASA, you know, have a certain percentage of of their budget that they have to award contracts to small businesses and that, you know, they have contracts for larger businesses. And the idea is that you say, we want to do this. And then you let everyone compete to do it for that amount of money. Those small company, those companies get to keep their own patents. NASA gets, you know, fair use of it, so they don't have to pay the person. They're like, you know what? Create whichever you want. You can patent oh, interesting. it. Interesting. You know, doesn't it also go the other way? Maybe I've heard incorrectly, but doesn't NASA also offer patent use to some of these um, folks that that participate in the X Prize and things like that? Oh, uh, I'm not exactly sure about the the details of that. I wouldn't surprise me if they were able to sign some sort of an agreement saying if we're doing it for this or co-develop together kind yeah. of a thing. Yeah, sort of a co development. Yeah. Um, so it's that kind of a thing where you know NASA can get new technology from these. That from is these actually really handy. So then, they does say, NASA? Hey, it's great technology. You know, it's. So you know, then it does sound like NASA ramps down as a space building agency and goes on as a research agency and also would have to branch out into like this commercial arm where they could interact with the private industry like this because this is going to be a whole active sector they're going to have to it almost in a a strange way like they become the government oversight for commercial space flight for yeah you can do it that way i mean they can still do hmm. research they could still have you know telescopes or satellites or rovers or whatever that they can you know put up with a percentage of their budget but it's kind of you know, a spectrum, you know, it's, there's these options, there's, you know, you can oversight, you can do some research, you can have your own uh, privately funded internal uh, projects that are going on. And it's finding the right place for NASA with its, you know, and it may change over the course of, you know, decades or years, dependent upon its budget, dependent upon, you know, the goals of the, of, of the government. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for you never know. For national security reasons, they might want to change their mind at some point. Well, now, Chris, I, I would like to respond. You were asking earlier how how Mars feels about the the commercialization of spaceflight, but I, I'd actually like to come out and soapbox a little bit because I think this is only a good thing. Okay, you can't really. I don't think personally that you can argue against this in any no, way. No, I agree. For a few major reasons. First of all, a government agency doesn't really suffer from competitive streaks. They don't have anybody right. to really compete against. I mean, we did right. back in the 60s, we competed against Russia. But right. these days, countries don't really go head to head for anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so no they, competition. Right. And as a lot of people know, competition is one of the primary forces that drives innovation, that drives um, efficiency on many levels. Absolutely. So in the private sector, if many people are going after something like an X Prize or to be the first private person to land on the moon or, or Mars or something like that, then they have these incentives to be able to plant their flag oh, out yeah. there and say, this is the SpaceX corporate. Well, I mean, could you first. imagine, wouldn't Virgin Atlantic, or wouldn't Virgin love to have the first flag on Mars? Mm-hmm. I mean, that would be oh, huge yeah. marketing. Yeah. That's, that's like yeah. the mar- kind of marketing that buys you a lifetime of company marketing. Right. I mean, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you know, the other thing that I think privatized space flight will bring is... Uh, yeah, yeah, a whole new wave of space tourism. I mean, honestly, yes. yeah. we already—it's already happening, right? Oh yeah, well, it's y- been happening. You get you get stories about this happening once in a while, but it, it, it usually costs like millions of dollars. Oh, absolutely. You basically, become an investor in the mission. But like you said, if private if private industry can get the cost down, yeah, or if it's more something like you know, it's not a solo space flight, but like you and fifty of your closest friends go up or something mm-hmm. like that. <laughs> Which I think. Uh, Mars, didn't you say somewhere in this doc that uh, SpaceX was aiming to have that kind of thing in like 2016, I think is, okay. the, is the quote that we have. Uh, crewed, crewed flights. Yeah. Now that uh, might actually be more towards, uh, you know, governmental flights to the space station. Mm. Um, so okay. far, what I know is, uh, what I've kind of seen is uh, the Spaceship One, Spaceship Two stuff is more along the lines of selling people flights to, you know, hop up into orbit and then come back down. So I was like, mm. oh, I was in space. Yeah. Here's a little bit of information. Uh, there was a, a gentleman in Japan. Uh, he went in, he paid $12 million for a seat on the flight to the now Mir Space did. Station. Oh, he didn't. His company did. Yeah. The yeah. Well, Tokyo Broadcasting Service 
they had a competition. Twelve million dollars. Uh, and that was back in 1990. So they, so that is, so okay. So back in 1990, you could you yep. could have a company win a prize and send you to the Mir space station. So obviously they rode along with the Russians. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you know, I've interviewed uh, Mark Shuttleworth for the Linux Action Show, and he rode. Uh, I, I believe he went to the Mir station. I don't recall, but it was on a Russian flight. Um, mm -hmm. And so that was interesting. Famous game dev, Richard Garriott went to space on NCSoft's dime. So, I mean, yeah. it, it happens, but it, it's, yeah. it's so expensive that it's not something oh, yeah. that just the average Joe can even contemplate. I got a question for you guys, but before we go, cause that'll be the last, I want to wrap the show on that. Do you guys have any other points you want to touch on for the private space tech stuff? Cause we kind of, We've kind of covered it a lot of from a high level because well, it's still an know, emerging you, industry. Uh, Mars, you probably yes. know this because I know you're an insider and you have this kind of information and you didn't include it in our doc, but which one of these companies is developing warp drive? <laughs> <laughs> that might be secret tech. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Well, whichever one does is going to be rich. <laughs> uh, all right. Any other notes before we wrap up? All right. I have a question. If, okay. if it was say, let's just pick a big number. Um, I don't know. $30,000. Uh, and if they said, all right, we're going to, we're going to offer space tourism mm -hmm. and, and chat room and, and people watching this, I want your comments too. If we're, if we're going to have say 2015, if you give us $30,000, you'll have a seat on this flight that For will like a orbit, or orbit the moon and come back. Ooh. The moon or just the earth? Well, all right, let's go earth. All right. Moon's ambitious, right? It's 2015, <laughs> right? It's 2015. Yeah, Maybe so 2020. The earth. No, the let's just do the earth oh, and then okay. we'll go from there. All right. All if right. we have to, but would you pay? I mean, well, you got to save up. It's long. Uh, orbit is 90 minutes. Okay. So would you pay $30,000? Start with you, Mars. Would you do it? If I, if for 90 minutes, that might be tempting. Would you start saving up right now for it? Would you I'd have to get take a out second a few mortgage like, on your house? That instead of a house. <laughs> well, that's what, yeah, exactly. But it's 2015, so you can start making that like planning. See. That, would, that would definitely be tempting. What about you, J-Man? Uh, I would think I would ask the Jupiter Broadcasting oh. audience to sponsor us. <laughs> All right, but then we're sending a camera if you go. Well, yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, I'd try. I'd try. I don't know how I'd be able to do that, but I'd try. I'd try to save, of course. I'm sure that's what everybody in the chat room will say, too, and, mm -hmm. and the uh, comments on the show. But I would sell a kidney, says Ski. Uh, and there, you know, that figures because Ski's the one that inspired this, uh, this, this episode of Private yep. Tech, so yep. it's only fair that he'd sell a kidney for it. <laughs> All right, everyone. Uh, we've decided, you know what? We talked about it yesterday, but we thought it's probably best we're going to take tomorrow night off, so there won't be an episode of Jupiter Night. Because we've got to tear this studio apart. Yeah. <laughs> Rah, but we'll be live, hopefully, if everything works out. Man, we have our fingers crossed uh, Saturday and Sunday, pretty much all day at Linux Fest Northwest. Mm -hmm. So that should be pretty cool. All right, everyone. Well, thanks so much for watching this entire week of Jupiter Night. And uh, Heather, thank you for joining us once thanks again. Thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure. And uh, we hope you'll join us uh, next Tuesday. That'll be the next uh, new episode of Jupiter Night. But then. pop in this weekend, too. We don't know what we'll be doing live, but yeah. it'll probably be live. Yeah. And, and there won't be a, just a one final note, programming note for Saturday. Stoked obviously won't be live on Saturday, but mm. we do have something in the can for that. So mm -hmm. there will be a new episode on Tuesday, uh, but we just won't be shooting it on Saturday. All, all right, right, that wraps up everything. Okay. Right. Thanks everybody for letting me get all that out. And uh, thanks so much for watching tonight's episode.